Bahamas Tonight Northern Edition starts now. Tonight, the Northern Edition. Good evening, all. I'm Shashina Wolfock. As always, it is so great to have you with us. Traveling news this evening accession to the World Trade Organization, where it remains a controversial issue. The Bahamas Working Party on the WTO was established in 2001 and recently injected renewed energy into, into the goal of joining the WTO by the next ministerial conference in June 2020. Well, there has been a vocal opposition to the WTO, but tonight, a local attorney is supporting the idea of the accession. Yes, I blame the former governments, all of them, um, because they have not helped us grow up with the rest of the world. Attorney Carrie Leonard believes that the Bahamas would benefit as a member of the World Trade Organization. He has studied the WTO for years and believes that misinformation may be the reason why many are fearful of this global change. If you understand the World Trade Organization and its rules, you can work within those rules and you can protect yourself to a certain extent. You're not going to be able to protect yourself 100%. But then again... Um, the object of the WTO is to increase trade and industry, which therefore normally reduces the cost of products to the consumer and at the same time has so far proven to increase employment around the world. He says the country has already suffered great losses in the financial services sector and with economic partnership agreements for not being a member. You've lost a number of good paying jobs in the financial service sector because we're not members of WTO. Uh, oh. and, and I can give you another example. It was polymers, which had entered into an agreement uh, to sell styrofoam pellets in Mexico. They were able to be very competitive on their price. And they were planning to increase the size, I understand almost double the size of the plant here. And that would have created a tremendous amount of employment. The Mexicans, their competitors, realized we weren't members of the World Trade Organization. So they just upped the import duties and that put an end to our expansion and end to the additional employment. If I'm a major investor, Bahamian or otherwise, why would I want to invest 50 or 100 million dollars in a business and you can't protect me? And then you look at the investment ratio, say, the amount that's been invested in Cayman Islands or Turks and Caicos, and then you look at us. He also advises Bahamians to do their research on the WTO and not allow FAIR to misguide them. There are a number of people who are out there saying, oh, well, the head of the IMF says that it's no good, and the G20 have said it's no good. No, they haven't. What they do, they've, they've been... I'd almost call intellectually dishonest and that they've been selective in what they've read from the very, or maybe they haven't even bothered to read the communiques or the, the statements by the G20 or the IMF. They start off by saying how good trade has been for the economy of the world and how important it is that we keep the trade going properly and that there, we do need to get together and see how we can fix the rules of the World Trade Organization to make it fairer. So rather than throw the baby out with the bathwater, they're just suggesting we change the bathwater. Many have questioned the role and future of small Bahamian businesses once the Bahamas completes the accession process. The Bahamas is the only country in the Western Hemisphere who is not a member of the World Trade Organization. So when you travel to Jamaica or Cayman or Turks and Caicos, you don't find Walmart there. Uh, you will find regular businesses, locally owned businesses, operating just fine. So uh, that, that fear, I think, is, 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 uh, it doesn't have to be there at all. Uh, the, um, the ability will be that Bahamians will be entitled to go and set up in other countries as well. In other news, a coalition of concerned citizens is calling on the government to protect Grand Bahama residents by ensuring that the Utilities Regulation and Competition Authority, or IRCA, is the regulatory body of electricity on the island. Coalition President Pastor Eddie Victor says for far too long, Grand Bahama has been impacted by high electricity rates. On this island, um, there is a great outcry from citizens, from the business, uh, businesses here in Grand Bahama, they want a regulatory body that is going to be looking out for the interests of the customers. 
Victor says based on their studies, Grand Bahama consumers are allegedly paying the highest base electricity rates in the country and are only paying the lowest in fuel surcharge. The whole um, aspect of um, having the right regulatory regime is very important in our island. In my hands, right here now, are over 300 letters that have been sent in to members of parliament in West Grand Bahama and East Grand Bahama. And these were sent in in December. Um, and these citizens, 300 of them plus, have said to their member of parliament, said to the government, that we want change in the energy sector in Grand Bahama. And one of the points of change that they are supporting is that IRCA regulates power companies on Grand Bahama. Urco officials during a series of town meetings on Grand Bahama last week addressed concerns. CEO Stephen Barrow telling residents during a meeting in Freeport that the regulatory body had lost touch with what is happening outside of New Providence and that they are now taking steps to strengthen their presence on Grand Bahama. He said they are mandated to regulate the electricity sector throughout the country and that while it has presented some challenges on Grand Bahama due to the Hawksville Creek Agreement, he says Erka has an obligation to regulate all sectors throughout the Bahamas, including Grand Bahama and the port area. Meantime, Grand Bahama's soft economy is said to be on the rebound with multiple investment projects in the pipeline. Many believe the island may finally be on the brink of growth. In this report, the first of a four-part series with our Italia Hall, the port president gives his take on the economy, the work the port is doing in the city of Freeport, as well as the way forward. To own a piece of this economy, uh, not just be workers, so we felt the urgency to get Bahamians involved in the process. The president of the Grand Bahama Port Authority, Ian Roll, says that Grand Bahama's economy is turning around. Roll believes that the recent announcements from the construction of a Carnival cruise port to the redevelopment of the Freeport Harbor and the ongoing negotiations for the sale of the Grand Lucayan Resort have all inspired hope and optimism among Grand Bahamians. A lot more needs to happen in regards to the development of the hotel and the harbor, etc. So don't ex I shouldn't think I don't, I don't think people should expect immediate uh, transformation. But what will happen is these projects will result in construction jobs, which will be fantastic for the community. Community, therefore, you'll see monies being spent in in the small businesses, and that adds value to the overall economy. Meantime, he says the Port Authority is focused on a number of marketing strategies and will soon direct a lot of attention to the Port Lakaya area. There are a number of properties, significant properties in there uh, that we want to see develop um, in, in, I guess in tandem with the Grand Lucayan. And once we get that sorted out, we also are focusing on a medical, major medical tourism uh, project. And that also will add tremendous value to the growth of, of Freeport. While there is optimism regarding proposed projects, Roll says there is one area that is not performing well, and that is land sales. Once we have persons employed, um, the hotel open up, other projects coming on stream, uh, I, I know that redevelopment will happen. Um, so real estate will pick up, but all these other various projects play a role in that. Roll says he is aware of the criticisms from some sectors accusing the port of holding Freeport back, but he is adamant that the Port Authority remains committed to the development of Grand Bahama. They will see in short order a transformation of Freeport and we're hopeful that the majority of the naysayers will now become positive persons and positive for the Grand Bahama Port Authority. The Port President says Grand Bahama is his birthplace and that is one of the many reasons why he is committed to the growth and development of this Island. Italia Hall, ZNS Network News. In other news, the Minister of State for Grand Bahama is responding to claims circulating about the proposed sale of the Princess Properties and the Xanadu Hotel. In a recent press conference, the Honorable Quasi Thompson addressing those social media reports. Unfortunately, not going to be able to add a lot to it. Uh, the matter is still being, there is an application before NEC, 
with respect to the Royal Oasis, Harcourt Properties, and Xanadu. And because it's still under active consideration for, uh, from NEC, uh, I wouldn't want to make uh, any sort of announcements or any kind of uh, give any detailed information until that process is completed. We believe it should be completed shortly. In news from the Crime Beat Police in Grand Bahama are investigating an armed robbery in the Queens Cove area over the weekend. Reports are that after 1 a.m. on Sunday, officers were called to a residence in Queens Cove where it was reported that two armed men entered the home and robbed a male occupant of personal items and cash before making their escape. Police say they are actively investigating the matter and are appealing to the general public for assistance. And police need your help tonight in locating two suspects. The first is 43-year-old Tavares DeMonte Backford, a.k.a. foe of Zimbabwe Nassau, and number eight for Bishop Circle Freeport. Backford is wanted by the Central Detective Unit for murder and is considered armed and extremely dangerous. Police say Backford is about 5 feet 7 inches tall, 134 pounds, medium brown complexion, and slim build. He has a tattoo of a mural along the left side of his face and the name Alexia on his neck. Police are also looking for 41-year-old Nigel Jamal Forbes, a.k.a. Guy Fox, in connection with attempted murder. Forbes is described as 6 feet tall, 169 pounds, with a low haircut and of dark brown complexion. Police warned that he is armed and extremely dangerous. Should you know the whereabouts of Tavares Backford alias Foe or Nigel Jamal Forbes alias Guy Fox, you are urged to contact the Central Detective Unit at 350-301 four through six or you can simply dial 911. You're watching the Bahamas tonight, the Northern Edition. Stay with us, there's more news on the other side of the court.